try to take on pests for a little while. So yeah. Like for, for one segment, we're going to talk about a particular pest. What is our what is our pest today, Ben? Our pest for today is well, I was going to say red planaria, but I've had all sorts of different types of planaria or flatworms. Man, so I'm thinking about my whole career spanning since the mid '90s, like just planaria not just red, like even beige and stuff like that. Just planaria is a thing that creeps up now and then. And uh, I think it, it takes a lot of new reefers, you know, like, you know, the typical, what is this? Oh my God, it's all over my aquarium. So in case you're unfamiliar, you know, red planaria or, you know, red flatworms, they're just kind of a rusty, you know, what, what's, a, what's a good like Texas size food bowl size comparison? They're like the size of a, you know, like a, a two fleas. <laughs> Why do I always have to use these painful like measurements? They're like if two sesame seeds were glued together. That's how <laughs> big they are. Yeah, they're they're tiny. They're usually rusty, rusty red, orangey colored. And you know, you'll just start to they'll they'll kind of they'll start to multiply around the edges of the substrate and the rock. They'll get on your rock. They'll get you'll see them moving across the glass. You know, I guess you could say that that like a what is that saying? The ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Like so, that's why it's usually pretty good to dip, you know, to do some sort of protocol <coughs> for corals. You know, and while I was thinking about doing this show, I was laughing at myself for a tangential thought because for as much you know, you know, pounding my fist on the pulpit of what should be done. Like Richard and I talked about this once in a further episode. It's just like, I don't always take the advice that I give out all the time. So, I mean, I get hit with red planaria. So I think I have a tank right now that, that was that's struggling with red planaria that I got to take care of. But I, I want to point out, there's really, there's almost never an actual problem with red planaria. They're just- Yeah, to, to my knowledge, they don't really hurt anything. Yeah, they can, they can cover a coral to block photosynthesis maybe, uh, but that's pretty rare. It's, it's mostly just people don't like how they look. So, you know, if I see a few of them, I just don't, I really don't care. I, I mean, I'm surprised I don't have them at home anymore. It's just not a thing that happens to me anymore. Um, you know, they're just a thing. So if I see a few of them, I don't care about them. They can explode. You know, maybe it's like everything else. As a tank matures, you kind of, other things are using whatever the planaria are using to live. Yeah, I mean, I definitely, I definitely would say, like, if you start to see red planaria, you shouldn't, you shouldn't do anything that might jeopardize your whole tank. Because it's not right. like, it's not like that. It's not a um, panic situation. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, I would try to get rid of them. So Salifert makes a uh, Salifert makes a product called the um, platform. Exit. Exit. Yeah. yeah. And but you got to I mean, just with all things, you need to read the instructions very carefully. So there is one thing that's bad about red planaria is if you kill them on mass, apparently they contain some sort of chemical that that can hurt your tank. Yeah, so the idea is, and we should get back to, you know, non-chemical means for dealing with uh, red planaria, but the, the idea is that some people, when they dose flatworm exit, they have problems. And it could be that they have a negative reaction to flatworm exit, or it could be that there's something in the flatworms. And if you kill too many of them at once, you follow your water with that compound. Um, yeah. I have no idea if that's supported by, you know, evidence or not. I've used flatworm exit a lot over yeah. the day, a lot. And I kind of have my method down. What's, what's your method? Well, it's like, uh, you know, I don't have the bottle in front of me, but it's something like one drip per gallon, you know, so you try to come up with the most accurate amount you can. Now, if you have poly filter, if you have carbon, if you have any sort of like absorptive resin you know uh chemically anything like that you want to take that out um flatworm exit i'm trying to think it does not make your skimmer go nuts i turn off no, the skimmer. It, it doesn't though i'm thinking of that's that's for the red cyanobacteria that's yeah. so it doesn't make your skimmer go nuts but 
so remove remove out any absorptive media you know that that could pull it out and you you do that amount up to your gallons and mine is tricky because since i'm doing maintenance i can't really sit there all day so i'll i'll dose and i'll sit there i'll do some other things for about an hour and then i'll go in after that do a big water change probably bigger than i'm normally going to do i'll throw in new carbon i'll put in you know brand new absorptive media you know and then i have to walk away from it i've done this like like yeah, yeah, yeah. Three dozen times. Now, with with not letting it go past an hour, what I usually have to do is dose it every single time I'm there for like three or four different times. So it's kind of like a, a multi-month process that I have to get through. Interesting. Because if, if you're just a hobbyist, you know, you would dose it and probably let it run for like half a day or maybe even a day, you know. Don't do they, that. Say, they say, no, you're doing about the same thing. Yeah, no, I would not let it run very long. Um, uh, uh, when I dosed it, I've dosed it a bunch of times as well. Um, I follow the instructions and it says, you know, uh, you, at 30 minutes or 45 minutes, you look for the flatworms to be agitated and start to die. Um, sometimes I'll double the dose or, or, or add more at that point to really kind of hit them for a little while once they've started going down. But then at 45 minutes or an hour later, I'm doing a big water change. I'm putting new carbon in and uh, I'm getting everything running the way it was running before. And I think for me, that's, I think the important part. Anytime I see a medication or a fish additive, you know, an aquarium additive that says, you know, run new carbon or, or, or I hear through the interwebs, you know, there are reports of problems, possible problems with it. I'm doing a massive water change and running new carbon right when it's done. And I'm saying, you know, a massive water change. I'm not, you know, don't do a 30% water change and then do a 40 and then another 30% water change. Do a 50 or an 80% water change. Yeah. Hit it because the dilution is better with a one bigger water change than smaller ones. Um, that, that is a point too. Be sure if you're going to do that, you know, don't do this and then mix up water. Be right. sure that you've mixed up a, a massive because, and that's a good point for even besides this, you know, if you're going to do something where you need, you need to do a massive water change, that will be less disruptive to your system. If you already had that crap mixed up like two days ago yeah. and ready to go. So I, what I would say is follow the instructions, but plan. So we can talk about this. If you have carbon ready to go and rinse, have enough water to do a big ass water change, whatever you decide. I do at least a 50% water change on it. 50. because um, when, at, the, uh, at the Steinart, what I would do is because we had essentially infinite fresh water, if, infinite new salt water, um, I would just flush the tank for several hours. I, you know, because it's a temperature, it's all good. All I have to do is turn a, a, a valve open and and balance to drain and i would run the tank to drain for a couple hours and really get rid of it all when i do it here i would do a 50 percent water change um but have all that ready plan it, i i think that's critical if if there are, is there evidence that there could be a problem why are you risking your tank right um besides that prep what you were saying before about make removing as many as you can right so um I think because uh, I, I cut you off because I cut you off about it. I want you to have the first word about it. <laughs> so I do a little method that I'll do sometimes it with, when I'm rehabbing someone else's aquarium that's messed up. So it's a little trick that I have where you get one of those, you know, filter socks that, you know, old school that you might, you know, put on your drain overflow. So I'll put that on their sump and I'll take like a, you know, just from Home Depot, like a, like a, like a pincher, like a. What am I trying to say? Like a know. clamp, a clamp. Uh -huh. I'm really, I'm really on a roll today. Yeah. So you, you clamp that on the side of the sump. Then I'll take a, you know, a thin diameter hose, like maybe half inch or smaller, five eighths, something like that. You know, and I'll get it in the tank. I'll get a step stool if the tank is high, gravity siphon, and I'll put it into the bag. I'll make sure it's secured into the bag. And so really you don't disrupt the tank running. You're not doing a water change, but I'll start going through and siphoning out where I'm seeing these little suckers. They're just falling into the bag. So I'm not doing anything like a water change. It's just putting it back into the sun. 
you know, and I'll do that for a long time and try to remove as many as I can see. Because, you know, like they say, I've never, I've never experienced, and it's hard to say, I've never experienced because I have also double dosed flatworm exit. And then I'm always like, you know, it, it, could, could it have been the flatworm exit that agitated something? But I think what they say is it's whatever, whatever um, compound comes out of the dying flatworms. Yeah. And I had something happen about six months ago where, um, now I don't know the name of them, but those little tiny brittle, brittle starfish. Micro brittle stars. stars. Micro brittle stars. I dosed the heck with some flatworm exit in a tank and that tank had a massive amount of micro brittle stars and they started climbing out of the rocks and writhing and dying too. And were they I, spawning? They weren't spawning because I've seen them do that before. They were, they were writhing and dying. The whole thing ended up derailing the client's tank. So between the red planaria and the micro brittle stars, you know, over months and months, it, you know, I, it developed a bad hair algae problem and I started, you know, doing everything that it could. It's just, there must have been thousands or tens of thousands of micro brittle stars yeah. in there. Just, I guess, biologically threw off the system. This is the problem with dosing, you, uh, you know, with chemicals is you're never sure what's going to happen. There can always be unseen effects. I, I used to, what I, when I prep a tank to dose with flatworm exit, is um, it's usually because there's a lot of flatworms. So you usually I'll pull out whatever rocks or leather corals or whatever I can that are infested and I'll dip them in fresh water. Uh, and because that, that'll that kill off the flatworms too. And at least they, make them let they go. hate fresh water. They will fly right off. Yeah. Fresh so, uh, uh, you know, at, at the academy, I used to be able to just open a tap and run them underwater. Um, here, you know, I'll make a bucket of, of, of DI water and I'll kind of match the pHs because that makes a lot of sense, I think, if I'm going to dip for any longer than 12 seconds. Um, give them a good swish and then put them right back into the tank. Um, I do that if it's obvious and easy. Um, but having done it a few times where there were way more flatworms than I thought or could see, I switched to the, I'm just going to do a massive water change at the end of this instead. Uh, I used to, you know, put a, 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 a rigid airline tubing and do and siphon them out that way. A piece of rigid airline tubing with a piece of silicone tubing on the tip cut. So it's less abrasive to corals and you can actually squish it against things and suck them up. Um, so, yeah, uh, I, if you can get rid of a bunch, but always be prepared and always know that there may be way more flatworms than than you know about. So with, be ready. with the with the ounce of prevention thing, when you when you when you're buying corals, you know, if you do some sort of protocol like two little fishies revive or, you know, there's a bunch of different dips, yeah. um, freshwater for some things. But like Richard and I talked about in another episode, freshwater will piss off some corals pretty badly. Yeah. But whatever you're doing, like that's another thing. Red planaria, they've never seemed to me they don't adhere to a substrate like very strongly. It's not a strong little creature. So even just swishing a new coral around, hell, even just switching swishing it around in some salt water might dislodge it you enough. Can, you can baste them and they'll pop off as well. And yeah. most of your dips are gonna are, are gonna make them let go anyhow. Yeah. So even even the most modest of dips is a good idea to keep plat planaria at bay because they're just uh, people generally don't like how they look. Meh. Okay, so here's here's an interesting one. The, this was a fun one. Man, this was a while back ago. It was probably a little over 10 years ago. I had a client with a 500 gallon where he didn't have red plenary. They were like beige and they were larger. Yeah. But they were absolute. Again, like they don't really hurt anything, but they can get to such plague proportions that it would just freak you out. Yeah. So at that time, I ordered the nudibron. And I believe it's Kalinoduria variants. Yeah. Um, and they're real sweet looking. They're black with like metallic blue lines on them. Yeah. And uh, actually, I'll put, I have a really old video because I recorded it. Um, I have a, a video of them eating uh, these planaria off the glass. Now it's going to look really digitized because it's a video from like 10, 15 years ago. And it, I, if, even if it was an Apple phone, it would have been like a three or something like that. 
So it's not the best photo quality, but they were hunting him down and they had, I don't know if I'm gonna call it a proboscis or what, but they'd get close and they would like suck the juice out of them. Um, I've seen them from time to time on lists, but I don't think it's all that common getting them. You know, yeah, I, I would suggest nobody ever buy those animals again. Oh, for, for real? For real. Why? What's real. the deal with them? All they eat is flatworms. Okay. And so many things we have in our tanks are going to eat them. And they're so prone to getting sucked into any kind of pump and dying. Yeah. They're, it's just a, it's a death sentence for those animals. They do not live in our tanks long term. Do you know, do they, they get them out of the wild? I mean, certainly they don't raise them, maybe? A hundred percent they get them out of the wild. Oh, okay. So that is a bummer. If they yeah. were raising them, and, then. And they're, they're also not really great at hunting down planaria. They're just, they're, they're not super efficient at it. It's like. They uh, did not I, solve the problem. Yeah. They ate a lot of them, but they did not solve the problem. It's how I feel about Bergia. It's like they're, they're, the biological control isn't actually going to do what most people want it to do, which is eliminate the problem. I recommend not getting any biological controls unless you like that animal. You know, I, even I will say, I will say sapphire damsels is in my experience, I've gone through just dozens and dozens. I love putting them in reef tanks simply for the fact it's a little diminutive fish. It has a great attitude. It doesn't have an attitude like other damsels. So it's, it's, a fish a little, you, it's a fish you like, if it's, whether or not it eats the flatworms, who cares? Never seen it. Yeah. <laughs> I would, you know, even peppermint shrimp are problematic, can be problematic. I've seen peppermint shrimp, you know, I stopped putting them in when I realized that they were, this was, you know, 20 years ago, uh, because they steal food from your corals. Yeah. And in extreme cases, they can rip open corals to steal food from inside the corals, uh, right? Because if you got a peppermint shrimp and you want it to eat uh, a pest like an aptasia, you don't feed the tank so much so they get hungry and eat the aptasia, but then when you do feed stuff, they're gonna eat it. So I, I'm not, you know, the, the days for me of getting animals in there, except for copper banded butterflies, because I like that fish as well um, for eating aptasia. They don't always eat aptasia, so you gotta like the fish. Uh, I, I'm not really shopping for fish to deal with pests. Yeah. It's a, or any animal. It's just, I don't think it works. I, I, so the I mean, amount of times it doesn't work and then you're stuck with an animal that gives you other problems. I, I'd be aware of it. I mean, as a, as a synopsis, like, you know, try to try to swish them off in the very beginning to try to avoid that scenario. Um, again, don't, don't crash your tank to try to get rid of them. That's not worth it. However, ignored they can just i've seen it many many times they can just cover your reef and freak you out um i guess there could be something to say if they if they were allowed to go to too high of proportions and for whatever reason they crashed on their own that could pose a problem sure my synopsis uh, is uh the same as hair algae if you can nuke it from space and by that i mean pull the rocks out and dip them in fresh water and get rid of them if you have a smaller tank and you want to get rid of flatworms, man, I think it's way easier to pull the rocks out and then rescape again. Um, so nuke them from space if you can, siphon them out if you can. Flatworm exit works, but it's got its dangers, so be aware of those. And uh, um, you may have to dose several times. And biological controls, meh. So, yeah, I think that yeah, that's that's the thing with the flatworm exit. Even even if I was just a hobbyist and I dose my tank. And the same thing with you saying like flush in the rock, man, you miss two of them and the you'll back. be right back at square one. So, so I don't like dose it once and all, and then I'll like, cool. I got rid of that for the client. Like I will still go through and dose until, you know, yeah. my protocol was to do it at least three times once a week. Yeah. Uh, and you, you know, if you do it once and then wait three months, you're, you're starting again.